good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> or good morning or good evening. It depends on where in the world you might be. But we're back we one are. month later for another ScreenFlow Live. You excited? I'm so excited. Who are you? I'm Abdul, and I work in support. <laughs> Did it catch you off guard with that one? <laughs> yeah, who am I? That's Wait a very a What's the answer to that question? question. Uh, my name's Lucas, and I am the product evangelist for ScreenFlow. And for those of you who have been here before, good to see you again. For those of you who have never been here before, welcome. This is a show where we're still trying to iron out exactly what we're going to be doing, but we think we have a good system. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll be doing everything all about video actions. Any any commentary on that? No, that's um, self-explanatory. Just video actions help move the image around and, and give a little bit of extra meaning to your presentation or marketing video or things yeah. of that nature. So we're going to delve real deep into that today. So stick around and we're going to start that real soon. And we're back like magic. Still here. <laughs> Still we didn't here. go anywhere. Um, before we start, I just want to let everybody know, and I'll tell you guys this at the end as well, that today, April 5th, we're doing all about video actions. Then next month, the first Wednesday of every month is when we do the ScreenFlow Live show. We're going to be doing using screen recordings and video callouts. So uh, if, we, if we look at uh, – let's open just a really quick new document here in ScreenFlow. If we can get this up on the uh, – up on the screen, we have all of these different toolbars. Hang on, let's wait for that. There it is. We have all these different toolbars. So we have the video actions, the audio actions, the video motion, screen recording, callouts, touch callouts, annotation, text, and media library. And this is really where the bulk of all of your ScreenFlow projects are going to come from, is that little area there. So we're going to be focusing on different parts of that over the next coming months. So next month, May 3rd, 2.30 on a Wednesday, using screen recordings and video callouts. Uh, the month after that, which will be June 7th, we're going to do mastering video motions and audio actions. And then on July 5th, we're going to do how to add annotations and text and how to use all that. So the next four, including today, will be deep dives into each one of those little sections in ScreenFlow. Bloop. Yeah, deep dive. Oh, I get it. That's good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, before we go into it, I just want to say that I think video actions are the most important part of ScreenFlow. I use them all the time, and they can really turn your video for something really blah and bland into something really nice. Mm -hmm. Have you seen any good examples lately of people using video actions to just like really spice up the videos? I didn't want to say spice up, but that's it makes sense. That is so cliche, but yeah, yeah, you are putting a little salt and pepper on there. So I haven't really, I mean, I see videos every day because I work in support, so people send me samples of things all the time. And there are certainly varying levels of expertise and creativity um, that I that come across my table and uh, some other technicians in here as well. Um, but I don't have anything to point to okay. specifically. Well, maybe we can create something to show you guys. What? Um, idea. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go straight up. We're gonna be we're gonna show you exactly what we're talking about. We're gonna start by just getting some source content here. So I'm just going to play this video. This is like the number one video on YouTube right now. These guys have 17 million subscribers and almost 15 million views already, and it came out like two days ago. So I'm just going to record this in case you guys have never used ScreenFlow. You can use this little recording icon. Come down and say configure recording. Make sure you're recording from the correct desktop. I don't want to record audio because we're just doing video actions today. And I'm going to press record. It's going to do its little countdown. And... We're going to let it just record for a second and uh, not touch anything. And I'm actually going to leave that mouse right where it is. And Abdul, I was wondering if maybe you could pull up uh, the comments there because I think you're just looking at the banner. Okay. So if you get out of that, we want to make sure that if you guys are commenting, we can see it. Um, is that live there? I'm not oh. sure. All right, that should be good enough for a recording. And now we can use that 24-second recording, which we have here in ScreenFlow to really make it look awesome. Come on, why can't I make that bigger? There we go. And if I use Shift-Z, by the way, so watch this. This is a nice trick. If I use Shift-Z while in the timeline here, 
it will spread out all of my media to take up the whole thing so I have a nice view of it. That's a nice trick. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. What's up, Luis? From Brazil, was that right? He will, Yeah, he is. Awesome. And all Kristen. the way from Brazil. I love it. Hey, guys. First time here. Yeah, so just to let you guys know, we're here to present some material to you, but we just really want to hear your questions because right. we know all the answers. And we're just really kind of going uh, like little bite-sized chunks because ScreenFlow is so in-depth. Once you really break it down, it would take forever to go through all the menu items. So we just kind of like to focus on one menu item at a time or property, if you will. So the little window that Lucas was referring to earlier this is actually if you're Let's talking to me to yeah. support referred to as the inspector window <coughs> so um yeah that's that's fun so that's moving around inspector window canvas area and timeline and here's your canvas crop button and here's our video button as well so that's what we'll be dealing with today yeah so we're gonna stick in this area here and i know i've actually heard some people in the past be like dude i'm in the video tab and everything's grayed out i can't do anything well, that's because you have to make sure that you select the video file that you actually want to be working with and as you can see as i toggle on and off of this i get all my values here and suddenly it's a lot easier to deal with so what i'm thinking about doing is just going line by line and talking about each one of these and then seeing them in action, how we can use those different values, add a video action to our clip, and then see it move around. So let's start just with the basics here at the top, add a video action. So if I just come in here to the middle and I click this button, I now have this little tiny yellow box on one of my clips. And for those of you who have heard of a term called the keyframes in the past, if it helps you, you have two keyframes. You have one here and one at the end of the box. I'm going to explain why, why I would have said something like that. Right, because depending on where your scrubber is on the front keyframe or the back keyframe will determine how the video action behaves. So if you were to have your video action in front of the yellow box or video action, then all of the properties will begin, so your action will begin at the front of the clip and, and end when it gets to the video action. Whereas if you have it in the back and you do a video action, the properties will remain on the right side of the video, video action or back end of the video action. So let me explain with a little bit of visuals what he's talking about. So we take our scrubber and we put it to the front of the video action. And then we change... The size. See, I just grabbed it there in the corner and I made it smaller and then pulled it to the middle. Now, if I pull my scrubber over here, you can see that it is now the original size after the video action. Before the video action, it's as small as I wanted it to be. And then after the video action, it's big. So if we let this play through, you can see what happens. Beep. So that is the basic tenant of video actions. Before this box there are certain parameters on the physical aspect of your clip. And then after the box, it will change and you can adjust what those changes are. So one time more, we can watch right through this. Boom, and it moved. And since we're here, we might as well talk about how the um, video went from small to back to its normal size and the time in which that took place. That is specifically determined by the length here, which you can create a, a longer, slower, more drawn out um, regression or reverse back to the original size um, versus a short time period. If we put this here, it'll zip up into shape, zap. So just a quick little, that's an easy way to determine how smooth or abrupt your video action looks right off and the bat. D and it all depends on the kind of video that you're making. I, I do a lot of software tutorials teaching people how to do things. And I like to zoom in. Like, imagine I wanted to click this little box up here. And I want to zoom in on that. Let's, let's make this 100% size real fast. And let's say that I want to direct people's attention to the top video clip here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come after this clip. And I'm just going to zoom all the way into that clip. And now when I say, oh, blah, blah, blah. And then if you click this button, boom, and it just jumps right up there. And that is an incredibly easy way to show people what you're focusing on on your screen for the kind of videos that I do. And, then, and if you watch now, if I just delete this, 
Now we no longer have a video action and we've jumped back because that change was after the video action and we deleted the video action so it stays in its regular state. And I want to acknowledge that when we talk about this we say a lot of words and there's video action and cursor and before and after and it can be hard to follow the words but really if you jump in to ScreenFlow and you start doing these things, if you add an action, it's really easy to figure out what's going on once you start moving the scrubber back and forth, forth and changing things. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend not just listening, but actually going in and practicing. Right. Um, and as we go through, we might remember things that we forgot about video <laughs> actions in particular. Um, a refresher for ourselves. Yeah. And then over here, we have add a video action and then reset to defaults. If you want to, uh, you can set certain defaults, but I never, ever use those. Do you, do you ever see people using default stuff like that? Um, not so much for video actions, but certainly there are some menu items that people yeah. make default. Like for annotations, <laughs> which we'll cover in another episode in the future, I always use default annotations. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's something we'll get to. So, let's start with positioning. You want to take this first part? Sure. Well, the position refers to the center point here of the canvas, which is denoted by this handlebar and circular... Um, X here. So that is our center point. If we were to change that to some other value, that will move off its axis. Hello. You said space instead of enter. I did. Yeah. So there you go. So that will move, you know, 100 pixels to the right. So um, to quickly get out of that, you can just come back in here and zero that out. So everything is relative to this center position. Some programs like to use their zero at the upper left hand corner. ScreenFlow is not one of those, so that is position in a nutshell. So one thing that, that that is really helpful for me, if I have it over here and suddenly I'm like, gosh, my video's here, but I want it to have a video action and I want it to jump to the middle of the screen, you can always drag it, but you could also add a video action and change your positioning to 0x and 0y, and it'll just jump right to the middle. So when you do that, you now have all of your information there smack dab in the middle right. of your screen. So basically, in essence, you've just created a fly-in an animation, if you will, using <laughs> a video action. Hoo-hoo, getting tricky. I mm -hmm. like it. And that's from the upper left. That was from the upper right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. You, you got me on that one. X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation. I'll let you kick this one again. Oh, okay. So this is again, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Thanks for the abrupt uh, segue there. Yeah. Um, so this is basically how the, the, the screen will adjust in a linear sense. So we can change it on the plane, if you will. So this will move it up and down. You can go 180 degrees and variations of that. So it finds that X axis, which is right there along the middle, and then rotates it around that one. Thank you for that visual. Yeah, use my arm. <laughs> Same thing with Y. If we went 45 here, that's a nice little, you know, feature that you can <laughs> go like this. Woo! I'm doing real good with my, my visuals this here. This guy is planetary. <laughs> um, so, you know, simple way to just add a little tweak, a little bit of difference to your video. It's not, you know, everybody's can make a video, but these are things that just kind of oh, you know, catch the eye or give a little bit of dynamics to the thing that you're trying to present. Um, you know, and if it makes sense to, to move it at a rotation where maybe you wanted to bring in another element to your canvas and make some room but still have that um, full screen, if you will, then that's, you know, something that can be um, incorporated. And then the Z is just sort of, you know, the spinner, if you will, basically like a fan. And you can actually use that little wheel. that little uh, handlebar that's in the middle there, and rotate this and rotate, to yeah, however you want. So, and that's really cool too. If you pull it way out, you get a lot of really mm -hmm. good finite movement on it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you wanted to make this like spin around one time, you could simply add an action, come in here, go 360, and then this thing should spin 360 degrees like so. Oh yeah, and if you do something like 1080. It'll spin Woo! three times. <laughs> All you skateboarders. Yeah. 1080 snowboarding, Nintendo 64. Yeah. Um, so that was yeah, really fast. That was so if you, guys, if you guys remember earlier, Abdul said you could stretch the video action. So if you see how quickly that went by, 
a little too fast for my liking. If you take this and stretch it out, now those three rotations will be over multiple seconds instead of you know a quarter of a second or a half a second. So now see how it goes much slower. Mm -hmm. And you can also add all of these things together. You can put them, you don't have to just choose one value. So we can do a Y rotation of 180 degrees flip it backwards and then an X rotation of 540 degrees these are all you know nice parts of a circle and that's right. the kind of degrees that you're going to use we'll go 720 so keep we can it up come back on the up and up well let's just do 360 here then so everything looks normal all right all right so now we've got on the on the Z rotation we got three spins on the Y rotation we have one spin and on the X rotation we have two spins or er, yeah that's right did my math correct. So now we can see all three of those different angles going at one time. <laughs> so why you would do that? I don't know the answer to that we question. We don't know, but yeah. you can. So. But the, the idea is that you can work with these values to change the orientation of your um, video. Yep. Um, one, of the, one of the, just a really quick example that I can show you is I'm going to Command C and then V, and I'm just going to double up this clip. I just copied it and then pasted a new one because I want to bring these here. And I'm just going to make one small and keep it on the left, and I'm going to make the other one small and keep it on the right. And one of the reasons why I would use specifically a... Uh, well actually, let's see the... Scale on that one is 46%, and the scale on this one's 44. So I can come back here and change that. Now it'll be equal, equal-ish, because this actually is 46.354. There we go. Now they're the same size. So one thing that looks really nice when you have two screens like this or two pieces of media is giving them some sort of uh, angle to look at each other. So I'm going to add a video a action to this clip and a video action to this clip. And I'm going to give the one on the right, I think I'm going to do negative 6%. And see how it kind of angled in towards the other one? Let's make it a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. Let's do negative 15%. Now you can really see how it's kind of angled in. This one over here, I'll do the same the same weight, the same amount, but we're going to do positive 15% so that it angles in. So now when we have these and we go through that video action, they're going to just angle in towards each other. And that's one of the reasons why I use Y rotation. It just looks a little bit mm -hmm. nicer when you give it some sort of uh, an it's angle. It's slick. It's much slicker, for sure. Um, and cropping. So, you know, I haven't tried this in a long time. Let's add a second video action here. Mm -hmm. And let's see if I can crop the bottom up. Is that going to add to the video action? So now on this left hand side here, let's just delete this guy. I put a crop at the bottom just to pull it up just a little bit. So if I send through, you'll see how that bottom is just going to rise up. So anything that you can interact with here in the video actions area, what do you call this, this window? The um, inspector window. The inspector window. So the video action inspector window. Mm -hmm adding all sorts of words together. Any any value that you change in here can be reflected in a video action that you add to that clip. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, you have your opacity as well. So if we want to change the opacity, which if you see here on the screen, it just shows how transparent it is, that will also be. So now we have a crop and a change in transparency. And if you watch, instead of watching here, if you watch over here, you can see the actual sliders change. There you go. So that is opacity and cropping. Mm -hmm. Now, I was at Abdul's desk yesterday, and he was showing me some cool stuff with a YouTube video that he made. And I was wondering, Abdul, if you could reenact some of that. <laughs> that was like 24 hours ago. I know. I, I know it's hard to remember that. that kind of stuff, but uh, it was cool. You had like this thing where the the YouTube video kind of morphed inwards, and it had a nice reflection on it. And yeah, it kind of yeah, moved. Yeah. So let's see. Let's see how you did something like that. 
Well, like I think we already covered that, but we'll try it again. So It'd be we nice to have see it in action. Let's see it in action. So we're going to first highlight our clip to bring up our values. We're going to add an action. I want this to take place at the four second mark. So we'll add an action here. Do, do, ooh, or we'll change <laughs> the oh, properties. Press the button. Right. So what I then did was just come in here on this axis and negative 45 whoops that is incorrect <laughs> did you mean to do it on y rotation i sure did yeah you know i use i use this all the time and all of these y rotation x rotation z rotation and i screw it up all the time still but right luckily it's easy to fix so what i like to do is just kind of make it fit right so we can come down here and bring this in Slam, and you see how it just kind of snaps to that grid. So if I wanted to like show something, I don't have anything really an element to bring in here, but um, it just kind of it, it leaves room for that, and then gives this a sort of different dynamic or a feel, if you will. And let's just pull this all the way out to the end. And w another thing we can do is just add a reflection here. So it just gives it this sort of like we're looking at a glass table, this sort of sophisticated look, if you will, that reflection, that clean I always, look. I always thought it looked a lot like uh, Apple commercials. Right. When they like throw out one of their new products, it's always like spinning through the air and you can always see the reflection underneath. Mm -hmm. Like when you look at this, this looks nice and professional. When you take the reflection off, it just kind of feels like an image floating in nothingness. Right. It looks like it a computer screen. You it know? looks wrong. Yeah. Add that reflection and it looks real Ooh. slick. Real nice, yeah. real nice. So, I mean, that's really all that we were discussing in terms of my recollection of our conversation. Well, I, I, I think that this mm -hmm. can look, that looks so much better than this. Yeah. I mean, th there are certain circumstances where you're going to want just the screen big right there. But if you can then maybe even spread this out and do a slow move on in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That looks really nice. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. And we can just bring that right back now. So what we talked about earlier was <laughs> the fact that if you if you do if you make an action before the video action with your scrubber, if the scrubbers on the back end of your video action, your properties are changed for the duration of that clip. Versus if you do it in the front, they're they're changed until you reach the video action. So now we're sort of stuck in this state of like, oh well, well I don't want my video to hang out there the whole time. So we need to then bring it back. So how do I do that? That's a really common question that I get on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have to add an equal and opposite reaction, if you will, to the original action. Way to go physics. Mm, so what we do in here, we know all our values at, at base are 100% in scale, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So easiest way to do that is just come in here, Shazam. 100 and then we're back to normal so you can see this play out it will do its little thing make it all spiffy <laughs> and then zap it back so that was a bit abrupt and maybe we want this to hang out a little longer so you know some things are happening i bring in an element to the left hand side up here on the canvas and then we bring this back and we're back in sort of normal video display mode so it just adds a little trick to your to your presentation it makes it move it's less stagnant just keeps the interest perked i would suppose um would be the main reason for is that the that. end of your little presentation on that because that i'm surprised that you didn't do what, what is generally uh, considered one of my favorite new features in ScreenFlow 6, which is, let's get rid of that. Snap back. So we have this action that we think is really cool and we like it. But like Abdul was saying, we want it to hold off for a second. And then we want it to come back to its original sna state. If we come up here to actions and we add a snap back action, just click that. It just makes that for us. And look, we didn't even have to go in and make a new action. Let's... Let it hold on for a second. It reads what was before and reverts back to that. So you no longer have to go in here and do what Abdul was showing you earlier, which is what I used to do for hours before we had this new feature because mm -hmm. you'd want to pull something over and then bring it back. Now you just add a snapback action, and it does the reverse mirror 
of the action that you made and it just brings it back to its original state, which I think is pretty awesome. Very nice. Yeah. So that's that's video snapbacks right there. Um, are we getting any people chatting here? Um, let's see. Is good use of Thunder Thunderlord. Luis. Luis, I don't know who Thunderlord is, man. I got to tell you that right here. You know. Thunderlord is cool, though. Hey, I like that name. Yeah. I could be Thunderlord. Thunderbolt, Thundercat, Thunderlord. I like it. Um, but, yeah, if you guys are out there and you have any questions, please put them in the chat. We're here to answer all of your questions. All right. Let's <laughs> Pertaining to video actions. That's for true. For today. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> we might, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying. Um, and then we also have, if we make this a little bit sh smaller, you can add a shadow. But that's going to be really hard to see. So what I'm going to do Ooh, is I'm going to change the background color. And this isn't necessarily a video action itself. This is a different part of ScreenFlow, but it's also very useful. If you click this button right here, which looks like a crop button, yeah, when you hover over, it says resize the canvas area. This is where you can change the canvas area. I generally recommend always keep it 1920 by 1080, especially if you're putting your videos on the Internet. I recommend you doing but then this button right here next to it which just shows black if you click this opened up on the wrong monitor it gives us a color wheel and we can change the background color and I'm going to change it to white here of our canvas so now you can see that we have our piece of material on top of a white background so now when we add a shadow boom you can see the shadow that we added mm -hmm. um, so a couple of questions it. here from Carrie. Can you have more than one snapback action within the first one? So, I mean, you would only really want one snapback action. Um, I guess. Because it's using the values from the previous action. That's how that snapback will work. Yeah. So if there were two snapback actions back to back, that would be confusing let's um, do for screen flow. Let's do a quick test and see what happens. Do you mind, Abdul? Sure. So here's our original state, which is full 100%. And at the two second mark or thereabouts, I want to add a video action where it gets a little bit smaller, moves up into the top left corner, and gets a 15 degree Y rotation. So now when we watch that, it's going to shoot on up there to the left hand corner. And then right here, I want to add my first snapback action. Mm -hmm. So I add a video. There we go. And if I wanted to, let's see what happens if I, it will even let me add a snapback action here. What does that do? It's not going to do anything because we it's haven't given it, right. we haven't given it a new value. But what we can do is let's add a new video action. And this time I want it to drop down to the bottom right corner. And let's do a 15 degree Z rotation, just for example here. So now it's going to jump over there, and we can add another snapback action. And look at that. So it looks like it's going to jump back to this. Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. <laughs> i got to tell you, I've never tried to do that before. I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, and it looks like we, we confused it a little bit. Have you ever seen that, Abdul? This is referencing the video snapback of the original. Yes. So there you can introduce some issues. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, so uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> what um, I would recommend is instead of adding another video snapback action, what you can do is once you've added your first video snapback action, cut your clip. Because now it's not referencing anything new. And when I add a new action to bring it down into the right hand corner and add Z rotation like I did earlier I should be able to then add a new snapback action that will bring it back to where it was so what was missing there was some sort of break in the continuity for the snapback action to read what was going on we have the effect that we wanted but in order to make it happen we needed to put a cut right there which doesn't affect our viewers. They don't see that there's a cut there, but then it allowed us to keep using these video actions. If I wanted to do it again, I would just cut my clip, and now I could add a new action and then another snapback. So essentially each clip has its own set of properties, so we're not changing those. No. Um, a couple of questions, John. The topic of today is video actions specifically. We're really not covering anything else today, guys. Sorry if you've come here for that. Um, 
but we're going to get into those things down the road. Like I said, we just have a, a few minutes to do a, a quick uh, demo on some, some items. So we thought the easiest way to do was just break each item in the inspector window into a different show yeah. um, or discussion. And that's what we're on today. Um, Larry, multiple items moving independently um, just depends on the scenario. You can certainly have different clips doing different things, different video actions on a clip. We cannot um, overlap video actions. You can't have two actions on the same clip at the same place, unfortunately. So, yeah. um, But what you can do is bring in multiple pieces of media mm -hmm. and, and give different video actions to them. I actually have one here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, deep Dive ScreenFlow Project. Is this the one? And this is, what, uh, this is one that I did in the past. And you can see that I have multiple pieces of material here that I added video actions to each. And this is a very complicated one. We have the webinar for this. It took a whole hour to show people how to build this animation. And it was all mainly using uh, video actions. But you can see here that I have, in this original clip, I've got the main box of the ScreenFlow logo, one of the reels, another one of the reels, and the lens, and then the circle. And so each one of those is an individual thing, and I put video actions on each one of them so that they will do individual things. So, yeah, you can add video actions to individual pieces of media. Hopefully that answers yeah, your yeah. question. For anybody that's, like, looking for tips and tricks overall in ScreenFlow, certainly you can, you can hit us up, hit me up at uh, telestream.net, support, ScreenFlow, contact, and submit a ticket, and we can, you know, work through your issues. Twitter and Facebook, too, if you just want to say, you know, maybe it's a quick question like, how come I can't add an action to this? Oh, you forgot to press this button, and we can help you on, on Twitter, stuff mm -hmm. like that, too. Um, but we are not done yet. This is true. Oh, did we talk? We never finished Shadows because we started asking questions. Uh, so we've got our white background. I'm going to make this smaller. And this I'm just going to go over really quickly because it's pretty self-explanatory. When you add a shadow, you see the shadow pop up. And then you can change the angle of the shadow, which is essentially not changing the angle of the shadow, but it's changing the angle of the light source, which is casting that shadow. Right. So, and here's from the top left, there's from the bottom right. You can change the angle however you'd like. Um, let's do something like that. You can change the color of the shadow very easily. You can make it lighter, maybe even choose a color if you want. And then you can do your offset, how far away your piece of material is from the canvas when it casts that shadow. Your opacity, which makes, you know, whether or not it's see-through, you can see something behind it, like if we pulled this down behind and we change the opacity of that uh, to something really high, you won't be able to see through it. And as we drop it down, or our blur size, which is going to affect... Let's get this guy out of the way. It's going to affect the sharpness of the edge of your shadow. shadow. So if I, if I go with a small blur size, it's just going to be a block. But if I go with a very high blur size, it's going to kind of just blend into the background a little bit more. So that's your shadow. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. But now we have two more, color controls and video filters. Right. You so wanna, color yeah, controls are your standard saturation, brightness, contrast. Um, so if you feel like your colors are just a little off or maybe one element isn't matching the other so great, you can, you know, trial and error these sliders to, to get it as close as possible. Um, certainly room for improvement always, but um, this is this can be handy. So if you've got like an, a, a couple of whites that are just one slightly off, you can um, decrease the saturation, hopefully make that white a little brighter, or, you know, in combination, make the brightness a little brighter, and so on and so forth. One thing that I do is uh, I do a lot of things with a camera on my face, and sometimes it's hard to get that perfect light. Maybe it's not bright enough when you bring the video in. For example, if I pull in uh, this video here of Andrew, See how he's a little bit dark? If I come in here and just boost maybe the saturation just a little bit and the mm, brightness, brightness just a little bit, suddenly that looks a lot better than it did when I was at 100. Mm -hmm. So just boosting the saturation and the brightness just a little bit makes everything look a little bit nicer. 
Um, and then the last one, video filters. And this, there's no chance that we could ever go through all of these. Uh, Abdul right. lo- knows a little bit more than I do about these, so I'm going to let him explain where they come from and right. why they're in screen. You should flow. bring in that video of Andrew. That since, is a good one. Since yeah. that's here. Um, so if you have a green screen and you want to do a video presentation, kind of how you see Lucas and, and I here in front of the canvas or um, presentation overall, uh, what you do is just come in here, pop in a chroma key, hit the add, and Shazam. So, and then you can kind of fine tune this over here with these things. We won't go through that whole scenario just yet, but that's how you add a, a simple chroma key and, and add a, an effect like you see us in front of this green screen now. And of course, the most important to achieve this effect is that you need a green screen like we have behind us. Yes, that is certainly paramount. <laughs> Without this it, working. it's not going to do anything for you. Um, and you can use a different color screen as well, just as long as it's not black or white, because those are more luma key things, not chroma key. Um, and we can't remove those from the background. So um, to remove a, a filter, you simply hit the X and remove that so these filters though are basically from the os these are apple core filters so i'm not an expert on these but you can come in here and add some distortion effects some blur effects um i think you like the gaussian Gaussian blur blur. blur. which is a very like industry standard type of blurring in the background if you just want to make something blurred a little bit that's what i would use is the gaussian blur and if you add it Right, but we'll just add it just for, for fun. So now just a, a quick blur. If you've got some sensitive information that you want blurred out real quick and encompassing a whole element or clip, then that's the way to go. Hit the X to remove any filter and so on and so forth. So you can go in and you can just play with this to your heart's content, add one. Does that work for you? Does that make sense? If not, then don't add it or remove it. Stylize. Um, some comic effects. Ooh, we'll depth of field, huh? Depth Whoa, of field. Cool. Hello. So, you know, we got we got, you know, some some cartoon effects in there and whatnot, but that's courtesy of the Apple OS. So um oh wait, hey, before you do anything, let's play this clip and see. That is so cool. I mean he looks a little bit like a raccoon, but it is really cool style. Mm-hmm. So there's all of those different styles. Sorry, I I, I had never seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> you got a little excited. I did, yeah. <laughs> um, and that's really the the gist of video filters. You can add multiple to any clip, um, and so on and so forth. So that is really uh, the video action menu. In, uh, in part, I saw a question over there. Did I miss the corner round? No, we just didn't talk about it. Mm. There you go. That's what the corner round does. It just kind of gives you like a nice little, and I don't even think you need that reflection on for it to work. It'll just take and it'll just put corners on your material. On any clip that you have in your timeline. Yeah. There you go. That's the corner round. And then it does affect, ooh, does it affect the shadow? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Affects the shadow, affects your, your reflection, it affects everything, which is nice. All right, so I would say that we have maybe eight minutes more, and we're done with the content that we wanted to go over. Oh, no, we're not. We didn't talk about curve types, Ooh. which is very <laughs> important. So I'm going to go quickly here. If we add a video action, and what we want this video action to do is make Andrew smaller and go in the left corner. Let's stretch it out a little bit. It's just going to go uniform. It's just going to move up there. Thanks for the smile, Andrew. <laughs> it's just going to move up there into the corner at a constant speed. Now, if I come down, <laughs> that's just too perfect. That is perfect. <laughs> if I come down and, and open up this little menu here, I, I just right-clicked the video, video action, and I have curve type. By default, it will be linear. Which is just consistent, just smooth. constant, smooth. Yeah. Then you have ease in, ease out, ease in and out. Uh-oh. Ease on in. <coughs> Bless, Bless you, you sir. sir. Excuse me. Exponential, Exponential ease in, ease out, out and, then and then none. none. Let's, Let's do, do none, none first. first. None's going to give, give you no transition at none all. None at all. The moment your video action starts, it's going to jump to where you want it to, to be. be. That's definitely acceptable in some circumstances. Then we have ease in. And if you watch, I like to call it the acceleration of the clip. It starts off really slow and then goes really fast at the end. 
one more time, starts off real slow and goes oh. real fast at the end. So if we switch this now to ease out, it's going to start off real fast and end real slow. Watch that one more time. And then the third one is ease in and out, which means it's going to go real fast and slow and then go real fast. So it's kind of a mix of the, the both of them. Or maybe it starts slow, goes faster, and then goes slow again. Correct. And so that just gives you a little bit more dynamism. I think I can say it like that. Wow. Dynamism. <laughs> you heard it here. Dynamism. Dynamism. More <laughs> dynamic movement. It looks a lot nicer. And one of the cool things that I like to do is let's get rid of this video action. And what I want to do is I want to I make it look like Andrew is bouncing up in the air. So, or, or maybe I threw him up in the air and then he comes back down. So I'm going to add two video actions, one there and one here. And after the first one, he's going to be at the top. And after the second one, he's going to be at the bottom. So that doesn't look like gravity was affecting it, like I threw something up in the air. So what I can do is, let's see if I think, ease in means it's going to go... I always forget this. Let's try ease out ease first. Out and then ease there we in. go. And then ease in on the second one. Ease out on the first one. Ease in on the second one. Watch what happens now. Well, there's too a bit much too much of a between. delay at the top. So you see how that kind of like went up and then came back down? Kind of like gravity is affecting it. It looks a little bit more natural. So that's what you can get away with with the video action curve types. Exponential in and out and in and out are just a little bit faster. We did a little bit of experimenting. I don't generally use them. I like the originals a little bit more, but that is an option. Mm -hmm. And then carry, we can't blur and follow a, a movement on screen. That is a highly requested item, but um, that's gonna require some additional engineering at some point. So something we're thinking about, talking about, but not there yet. Sorry. There are there are some workarounds. Um, it takes a lot of time. I'm just gonna explain it. I'm not gonna show you, but what you can do is you can take the original clip and take the second clip and, and copy that clip and put it on top of each other and blur out the area that you want and then crop everything out of that top clip and then add the same video action so it follows it along. It's really tricky to do. It takes some time to get it used to, and it's not intuitive, but it is possible. Maybe maybe at some point I can go into something tricky like that, but it's only there as a workaround. Right. Uh, any more questions? We got a couple more minutes before questions before we got to shut it down. Let me know, peeps. Put them in there. Um, but before we do go, I just want to say one more time, we are doing this every first Wednesday of the month. It's always going to be Abdul and I. Um, like it or not. <laughs> like it or not, we're going to be here. Um, but this one was all about the video actions and the video tab in general. Next month is going to be using screen recordings and video callouts. So that's how you do little highlights on the stuff that you've recorded, that kind of stuff. We'll get into it. The month after that, June 7th, mastering video motions and audio actions. And then July 5th, the day after 4th of July, for those of you in the United States, how to add annotations and text. Um, so those are those are the, the next four that we have. And uh, when those are done, maybe you guys have more things you want us to talk about. We, we really have all sorts of directions to go. So any of your feedback after the fact or during the shows is very helpful for us. Um, any questions here? Um, Making the video into the professional. Oh, that's a good question. Kristen Strait. Any tips or tutorial on making a video video intro look professional if you don't have any design experience? Just fake it till you make it. <laughs> I know I know it sounds ridiculous, but I started doing stuff in ScreenFlow with no experience making that kind of stuff, and I've eventually gotten to the point where I can make stuff that looks pretty cool because I just try and try again, and you put something in, you're like, ah, it doesn't really look good. Maybe mm -hmm. I'll change it. Oh, that looks better. Another thing to do is take inspiration from people around you. Watch commercials on TV. Mm -hmm. Look at design websites on the Internet and be like, you know, that looks cool. I don't necessarily want to steal their idea, mm -hmm. but I'm going to try and replicate what they did 
and learn the skills that will allow me to make something that looks like that and then create my own. So right. look at other people's stuff and copy it and then take the knowledge that you gain from that process and, and create your, your own. own. Yeah. yeah. So basically mimic something until it feels like it's your own creation, if you will. Yeah. So, I, for example, I showed you guys earlier that uh, that project that I made, this one, which is just a really quick intro. I mean, it's not the best thing in the world, but it looks pretty cool. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw that. Let me show it to you again. Sorry. There you go. This one. Um, just the way that it breaks out and moves apart and the bouncing and all that kind of stuff. I saw other people do that, and I was like, how can I create that effect in ScreenFlow? And then I replicated it. Uh, any other questions? Or outsource it. What is it? <laughs> That's like? true too, but not nearly as fun. <laughs> What's it like working at Telestream Amador? Hmm. Oh man, Amador Custer. Wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't you like to Wouldn't know? Wouldn't you like to know? Maybe, huh? we'll, we, maybe we'll come next door and, and, and talk about it. Well, it's a really big difference between this building and the building over there. Over here, it's Indeed. just party time all the time. Excellent. Yeah. We love working here. It's fun. Plus, I get to work with you, Abdul, and that's awesome. Oh, thanks, buddy. Yeah, I'm I not even just saying that. It's true. <laughs> um, all right, everyone. We're going to call it a show here. Thank you so much for showing up. Uh, don't forget to come to next show, May 3rd at 2.30, Wednesday, May 3rd, using screen recordings and video callouts. It's going to be awesome. Any last parting words yeah, for Yeah, get your audience? questions for that topic ready. Um, and like I said, if you're having any issues with ScreenFlow, I'll be there to help you out over the interweb um and yeah so we can we can work out your issues and send us your projects and feedback and whatnot so yeah we'd love to see what you guys are making with ScreenFlow. it's really cool to see people doing cool stuff with it so especially when i get to look at that and be like "Ooh, i want to do something like that <laughs> we might bite it yeah and right. then i then i get to learn a little bit from what you guys have done too all right we will see you guys next month have a wonderful afternoon <laughs>